There's never been a blood test for the brain until now. AUT Millennium, known for its work with high performance athletes and now home to a revolutionary new tool. In the past, there have been blood tests for the kidney, the heart, the liver. And now this groundbreaking machine means we can now conduct a blood test for the brain, assessing 150 different markers, including two brain proteins linked to a common head injury. One of the biggest problems with concussion is that most concussions go completely unrecognized. And why is that? Well, if you twist your ankle, you can see that your ankle is big. You can feel it, it hurts. When you injure your brain, you can't see that you injured your brain. It's often said that it is a silent injury. If we can help medical doctors to be able to use a simple blood test, just like you would for cholesterol or for glucose, to be able to identify your risk of concussion, whether you've had one or not, that's really gonna help. By measuring the level of brain proteins present in the bloodstream following a head knock, the machine can help turn a once subjective diagnosis into an objective one. So what we're able to do is quickly assess if the brain has had injury. So a quick analogy I would say is if you imagine a pinata and you hit the pinata and the candy falls out, we measure the candy. That's what we're doing. But in this case, the candy would be brain proteins. It's also able to check vitamin and inflammatory markers and estrogen and progesterone levels to assess performance, brain injury, and recovery time. A game changer for female athletes in particular. Well, females have been really underserved in the research so far, um, which is a real shame, um, particularly because we also have evidence that females take longer to recover. Um, we're not quite sure why that's the case yet. And so helping us understand, is there a role of the menstrual cycle? Is it to do with hormone levels? Um, is it because there's different demands on females in their everyday life, we don't know yet. Which is why the blood detector is being used in this world-leading study, specifically focusing on concussions in females. And when we think about women's health, especially when we're talking about neuroplasticity and brain health, the brain changes even across the menstrual cycle with exposure to estrogen and progesterone. So it's really important that we can do this, especially in women, because of the greater incidence of concussion, the fact that women tend to have more severe post-concussive syndrome, which means that they last longer. And a lot of times it gets just washed aside where they're like, is it really a concussion or are you having uh, mood issues from menstrual cycle? Beth says women typically get more concussions in the same sports than men, something she believes is often overlooked. And the reason women get more concussions, it's really for three reasons. Reason number one, we're built different. If you look at me and my neck structure, it's going to be different than a typical man. Point number two, our microarchitecture. When you zoom in on the brain, that also looks different. We have more connections across our corpus callosum. You hear there's a, a joke that women can multitask and men can do one thing at a time. Well, there's science behind that. So we may have more connections or cross streets, but they can be more fragile under injury. And number three, we have the neuroendocrine overlay. So it really makes a difference if a woman is injured, if her estrogen is high versus her progesterone is high, we know that the same injury with different hormonal levels have a different result. Which is why the results from the study are expected to be significant for female athletes particularly when it comes to return to play guidelines. Guidelines are based primarily on male data. And if we start looking at the severity of concussions, especially between the hormone profiles for a woman, you can't say, okay, well, you know, you've been checked off because you don't have these symptoms. Stress can bring it back and it doesn't even have to be physical stress. We see low sleep can bring them back. And so it's like, how do we actually clear someone to be safe to return to play? Because the last thing in the world you want is someone to return and get another concussion. So that's where this research is really gonna be helpful to be able to identify, yes, you had a concussion and let's look at return to play. Do you still have some of the proteins circulating in your blood when they shouldn't be? If you're not cleared. The use of this machine in the Women's Health and Neuroscience Research Program is just the start of many concussion-based studies expected over the next few years. We want to make this big and we want to look at it from every angle and we'll be looking at this from multiple perspectives. We want to get the full picture. So for us, you know, this is just the real start of the study. So we're really excited to see how we can be world leading 
for AUT to host this machine, to be able to run this program and have multiple studies over the next 10 to 20 years.